The following opening has flashing images skip to 50 seconds to skip the opening. Also, spoiler warning. Hello Spirits, as you just saw there, that was only a taste of what Spider-Verse looks and feels like. And so recently, I got back into watching Spider-Verse clips, which led me to actually want to watch the movie. I loved this movie when it came out, and still did for years, but I never had the opportunity to actually review it. And plus, I've been on a negative streak, so I wanted to do something positive. So, without further ado... <laughs> The movie follows Miles Morales, learning to become the new Spider-Man. This is all with the help of the other Spideys from different dimensions. They must team up and stop Kingpin before the Dimension Spiders die, and before the universe collapses. Sony's animation department has had a very well... Rocky is the kindest word I could actually give. So yeah, they've had a rocky track record when it came to their animated films. Sometimes they would release weird films from their childhood, or ones you've never fucking heard of. Or they would release great films that make you love Sony. But then they would release uninteresting or soulless films that were original or milked. But for this film? For a movie like this to come after their fiasco with the Emoji Movie? Spider-Verse to be their magnum opus? <coughs> What do you charge? How does this make it a magnum opus? Well, let's start with... Now let me tell you that the amount of animation that went into this film is just incredible. And quite frankly, better than any new animated Disney, Pixar or DreamWorks film in a decade. Bad guys and butch don't count because those stars were after Spider-Verse. But let me just say this, you're telling me that an $80 million film, not even half the budget of a Disney film, has the most unique animation in decades? Now this doesn't look like your typical bouncy Sony film. No, no my friend. All of their movies have this sort of style to them. Usually weird shades from human anatomy, which is no problem. George R. Gutierrez does this with his other characters. But unlike Sony's roster, this film has a different style, a different feel, different elements being mixed in to make this movie. And so, one of the biggest things about this movie is its animation. And honestly, I don't care if I'm hit with a pitchfork for saying this, but this is the best animated film out there to date. Obviously, there has been a lot of Disney films with incredible animation. They've had beautiful shots and backgrounds, even animation angles produced by the absolute god that is James Baxter. So yeah, there has been a lot of kings, whether old or new, but how Spider-Verse makes this animation unique isn't just its fluent animation, but animating on twos of movements for all the characters, which is why the characters look the way they are when they're moving. But oh boy, that only adds another delicious layer onto the cake, and with the toppings of the already fluent and dynamic animation for a Spider-Man film. From bombing heads to kicking ass, the animation shines through at every frame. The other element in this movie is its unique look. No, not its animation, even though it is impressive. If you're now only just finding out in this video, this entire movie feels like a comic book. And that's because it was designed to be like one. Having this animation alone would have been enough, but no. They wanted to step away from the Pixar norm. And so they went the extra mile to add comic print, shading, and lighting. Like, they built their own visual language, as they call it, to help the artists. And it doesn't stop there, ladies and gentlemen. There are 2D images in between frames, boxes explaining Miles' thoughts, topography and marks, which would help indicate what's happening in a comic. Now, remember when I said they have comic print shading? Well, they actually use a lot more comic print to give it that comic look. Pausing at any frame, you'll see some level of comic print, or even that use in, like, the collider beams. I should also mention they are also going to use this visual print effect for the new villain in the next movie. And there was also the use of chromatic variation, which was usually the misprinting on comic books. And it was actually used as a sort of blur to shift focus on what is and isn't important. But it's not just the animation or comic feel of it. No, 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 no. It's also that it's very colourful and alive. 
Now, there isn't a moment in the movie where the backgrounds feel dead and lifeless, unless those moments have a deep impact. Some movies will use something to their advantage to show happy scenes or gruesome scenes you should take to heart. Well, how Spider-Verse does this is with a frame of Aaron being shot, showing a red to show the urgency of the situation. And, well, of course, blood. And so, afterwards, Miles swings into an alleyway, with a background being dark and ugly. A lifeless background, unlike the buildings we've seen that were full of colour. This shows the symbolism of how Aaron is on his deathbed, because of his last good act to Miles. Another is early in the film, when Miles' Peter is almost dead, left in an area that doesn't have any nice colours in there, showing us just how dark the scene is. So, the animation is spectacular, the comic feel of it is a beautiful, unique element I adore. The backgrounds are vibrant, whether in day, night, or in tunnels, or they look ugly and show symbolism. Another great element of the films is its very likeable characters. While it is lacking in different Spideys, we do get different alterations of the spiders that aren't the same, either in terms of person, personality, gender, species, or the use of their power. In the movie, there are six Spider-Men and Spider-Women, Miles Morales, Peter B. Parker, Gwen Stacy, Noya, Penny, and Spider-Ham. And all of the spiders are actually likeable characters, even if some are stereotyped turn to the max. Some of my favorites I'd have to say are Miles and Peter character. Miles in TV history has been basically a mirror to that of Peter's Spider-Man. Apart from the design of his outfit, he never had a unique personality to be his own character, unlike the other Spideys we've seen before Spider-Verse. However, this new Miles was something different, but he had to learn he can be different. So how does Sony display this? Through the movie, we get shown Miles try and copy the original Spider-Man, but this is something that didn't work, almost getting him killed and causing his powers to be disconnected. But him understanding the fundamentals of his skills, and with Peter's words, he controls his powers. He makes his own suit, he becomes the new Spider-Man, his own Spider-Man. Peter B. Parker is a different take on the normal Peter Parker. I mean, in the shows at least. I, I, again, I don't read comics. One where unlike the other Spideys, he's a lot more broken or washed up, as he's lost more than the others. Something to understand is that there is a mandatory thing about Spider-Man's character, which is experiencing a loved one die. But Peter B. Parker, well, he had to bury Aunt May, experienced a divorce from fearing of wanting kids, leading him to still have the skills of Spider-Man to be competent as a Spider-Man, while also showing us that his character is drive to have nothing to lose if he stayed in Miles' dimension to die. But over the course of the film, he learns to change, and he learns that he might want kids. His comedic yet darker take on Peter Parker, and I'm all in for it. I should mention that in my last video, I wanted new characters to be shown in an animated media, whether shows or movies. I just didn't want the same characters. Well, while they do show the same Spideys here, well except for Penny since I had never known her prior, I do like these iterations better. For example, I knew of Noir from Ultimate Spider-Man, and boy was he a buzzkill, and just quite frankly unlikable. Also yes, I saw the episodes, while he does change in Spider-Verse, he was still fun without any help from the spiders while existing in that gloomy universe. You're welcome. You? I know. You? I'm not so sure. You remember Miles. He came with you in that whole Goblin Portal thing. Oh yeah, I tried to forget that. This one's more fun while maintaining that old lingo from his original universe, but I'm not here to talk about the other Spideys. There were characters like Scorpion or Prowler I had no knowledge of until this film. I uh, usually got my knowledge of different Marvel characters from the LEGO games. Moon Knight, Beetle, Kingpin... I had no clue who any of these characters were. Now Prowler for example, yeah they were in some spider media. They got some screen time in the spectacular Spider-Man, but got an outfit in a really shitty version of Spider-Man. <coughs> and I gotta say, him as a twist villain is actually great. For context, he's Miles' uncle Aaron. And for when he's on screen, we've seen he's a nice guy. He's a great uncle to Miles by helping him embrace his art. But in subtle ways, the movie persuades us that he is bad news. Which is revealed with subtle nods to how he found the graffiti spot, or when he's out of town, despite being there a day prior. And Miles actually finds out Prowler is his uncle, which later on, his uncle finds out the kid he's hunting is his nephew. So yeah, the characters are amazing, but what about the movie's writing? 
down to the humour in his writing, it's very enjoyable. As you heard, the characters are also very likeable, regardless of their stance on good or evil. Now his writing is very clever, enough to the point where it spawned so many memes and continues to make memes years later, such as some of the throwaway lines or the actual jokes. Some of the humor is like this. I know you snuck out last night, Morales. Play dumb. Who's Morales? Not that dumb. Or sometimes, even after a frightening scene of your uncle chasing after you, a character will crack a joke. My uncle. Hey, where have you been? My uncle you... Aaron, he's, he's, he's the prowler. Okay, he, slow down. He slow works down. for Kingpin. He tried to kill me. This is a pretty hardcore origin story. It's okay. So I'm glad we got actual humor in this movie that gives me a couple laughs and not a terribly written movie. And it's not just the humor, but the writing also can spawn some theories, which are great on their own. When stealing a computer, Olivia Octavius was revealed to be Doc Ock. Spider-Man says, Can I assume that your friends call you Doc Ock? Only for her to say, My friends actually call me Liv. My enemies call me Doc Ock. Which you might be thinking, Yeah? So, how does that colorate with anything? Well, after the Prowler scene, Miles brings a villain to Aunt May's house. When she walks in, she says, Oh great, it's Liv. Suggesting the two are friends at one point, or still are. I thought that was a clever Marvel thing to do. And I should say a lot of the character arcs are amazing in the movie. Miles forming his own Spider-Man path, Peter learning to be a better man, and Gwen letting people back into her life. However, if you just paid attention, I only named three of the six characters. Unfortunately, due to time restraints, they delivered this to only three characters, and the other three characters are backhanded nothing. This being Noir, Penny, and Ham. While they do get their moments to shine in battle or have a funny joke to tell, they don't get that screen time. But that is absolutely fine. For something with around six different characters, which may have been too many spiders for starters, it would need an animated show to deliver character arcs that well. So I'll take a better written movie than a movie that focuses on whatever issues they're struggling with. Speaking of, I hope the increased characters in the next film don't interfere with the writing. Now the music in this film is just phenomenal, and I don't mean the songs like What's Up Danger or Sunflower, but I will say those songs are amazing in their respective scenes. But I'm also talking about the other background themes. Especially, you know what it is, the one, the only, the Prowler's themes. Yet this theme in Escape the Subway is probably one of the best and scariest themes I've ever heard. The theme alone is enough to send a chill down my spine, just waiting for the noise, just waiting for the song to truly start. And having it with the scenes of Miles running from the Prowler makes this truly scary. The music helps demonstrate how much of a threat Prowler truly is showing us he's not just some low-level groom with his enhancements. He's truly a hunter that can kill, and once Kingpin sends him out like an attack dog, just hearing this immediately after he starts running, you know you're fucked. Kill that guy. Theme and animation helps demonstrate who's the prey and who's the predator. You know who's being hunted under a life or death situation. You know that Miles needs to think under pressure to escape, because he cannot fight him direct on. Good music will always add another level to intensify a scene that is meant to demonstrate fear. <laughs> Now, Sony are fully aware of Spider-Verse's popularity, and sometimes when movies or shows plan future installments, they're not good. However, already in the teaser for Across the Spider-Verse Part 1, we got stunning animation, returning characters, the fucking apes already made a meme. But we also get a look at how the dimension hopping will work, as well as some of the 2077 screen time. But the best Spider-Man and animated film of all time, and I can't believe I'm saying this, is in good hands with Sony. I think for once, a studio recognizes what great the animation has to be, what the writing should be, what characters the fans want to see, the story they want to see told. Hopefully the new movies are even better than the original, so then we get the Shrek 2 experience all over again. In conclusion, Spider-Verse is one of the best animated films out here to date. Down to its colour, the dynamic posing and fights, the characters, its writing, the movie has no right being this great. And yet, Sony took us all by surprise with this film.